Hi Ben here, welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to be range testing a pair of Baofeng K5s. So these were sent to me direct from Baofeng and I'll put a link in the description down below as to the pack they've sent me but if we open the box up you'll see there's a, a pair of the K5s in there. They come with four batteries in this particular pack and uh, four antennas. There's two uh, two meter and 70 sems uh, antennas as well as two of the 220 megahertz antennas which I think do VHF as well but uh, how well they work I don't know because uh, we don't have uh, 1.25 meters here or 220 megs so uh, uh, they're there but I've got no way of testing them as such. Uh, usual things you'd expect in there uh, like the USB C to USB uh, charging lead and a couple of lanyards. You also get a pair of the little uh, earpieces and uh, and a couple of belt clips as well. What I like about the belt clips is they attach to the radio rather than the battery and obviously if you're interchanging the batteries then you haven't got to worry about swapping the belt clip around each time. So you might notice there is an absolutely uncanny resemblance between the Baofeng K5 and the Quansheng UV K5. They do look very similar but again they're uh, totally different radios size wise. The uh, Baofeng is much bigger than the Quansheng, as you can see there. And uh, again, like I say, very different radios. I've also done uh, a review recently on the UV25, which is a huge, great big radio, and the UV28. And uh, this is kind of the little brother to those because um, it uses the same menu system. And even in the uh, the CPS or the on Chirp, the programming uh, software, it uses the same format for uh, for all three of these I've discovered. What that also means is they've all got the same menu system and you can see I'm out in the car at the moment and uh, it's quite bright outside. But the menu is really difficult to see if I uh, angle it just right. You might be able to see the uh, the screen there. You probably just get a lot of reflection. But um, So it's not too bad in the car but as soon as you're out in the sunlight it's not that easy to read unfortunately. And um, again same on the menus of the UV25 and the UV28. If I press the menu button uh, the menu is shown at the bottom there in red writing. And uh, it's, it's again in, in this light, it's almost impossible to see with a dark red writing on the on the blue background. So uh, I have emailed Baofeng about this, and they said thanks very much. Uh, they're going to let the technical support know, and hopefully there might be a uh, a firmware update that can cure that in the future. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. So anyway, I dropped one of these off with Richard G0VCW, and then I headed uh, down the coast a little way and uh, stopped at a few different locations just to. Uh, um, about two miles, three miles, four miles down the coast, and uh, this was the results. Right, so I'm on the cliff top at Pakefield, just over my shoulder there. You can see the old Pakefield lighthouse, which is uh, now the Coast Watch. And uh, Richard is about two miles in that direction uh, at Kessinglin, so we're going to give him a call first of all on two meters and see if uh, he can hear us. G0 VCW, G0 VCW, M7 FRS, M7 FRS. How copy, Richard? Yes, stand by, Ben, the dogs are barking. M7 FRS, G0 VCW, G0 VCW, M7 FRS. Yeah, got you there, Richard. And, um, yeah, you're... Uh, not too bad. I can't actually see the S meter because of the uh, the light on the uh, on the screen. Now that is the downside to these uh, this menu and this screen. But um, yeah, a little bit of background hiss, and I'm currently on the cliffs by the Pakefield Lighthouse. So my guess is I'm about uh, two miles away yeah, as the crow flies over. Okay, Ben. I did expect it to be a little bit better than that. I've got quite a bit of uh, white noise. Funny enough, uh, if I go outside, it's worse than uh, inside. I just sort of stepped outside because I thought it would make things better, and it's, uh, it actually uh, went went worse. It must just be the uh, line of sight between us. Um, just stand by one. I'm going to change an area. I'm going to change it over to uh, that other area just to see if that makes a difference. Then um, I've got a couple of areas here to try. If uh, that's okay with you, back to you. 0 VCW M7 FRS. Yeah, that's fine, Richard. We'll give that a try. And obviously, I'm right by the uh, uh, the radar as well, so that might be causing problems as well. There, back to you. G0 VCW M7 FRS. Now down on the beach. So I've come off the cliff top, and I'm actually on the beach now. So it could just be there was some uh, some buildings in the way, Richard. But 
I can sort of see Kesson and uh, in the distance, uh, just over my uh, my shoulder there. So, uh, how copy now? From M7 FRS, yeah, that is the problem. It is quite a, uh, a breezy day down here. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll head a bit further down the coast and uh, see if I can still get you from uh, uh, the other end of Pakefield, and then we'll head down to Lower Stoft. Huh? VCW M7 FRS, okay, meter. shall we just try 70 SEMs before uh, uh, before we try that? Because obviously we're on two metres at the moment, so let's try 70 SEMs just quickly. Yes, QSL, try 70, QSL, 70 SEMs. Right, so I've got 70 SEMs programmed in the other VFO, and we'll give that a, uh, give that a try. G0 VCW, G0 VCW M7 FRS, now on 433575, how copy, Richard? That's mad. Um, that's much, much better. That's much that's, better. Uh, yeah. A far better copy this end. Ben, over. Yeah, QSL, QSL, Richard. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, same here. Um, no, no white noise at all. Crystal clear. So uh, definitely performing better on 70 sems, ever. Yeah, which you wouldn't expect, would you? You'd expect the uh, the two meters to perform better. Um, uh, say, maybe something to do with the uh, the built-in aerials. Uh, maybe better on uh, 70 sems than they are. On, on two metres, um, as I because it's a helically wound uh, aerial. Uh, that's all I can put it down to, because uh, theoretically, in the same place, uh, you shouldn't really come through quite as good. That was uh, that was like chalk and cheese. This then bent over. G zero BCW M seven FRS. Yeah, we'll copied uh, Richard. And uh, when I did the test on these earlier, uh, I, it looked like two metres was about. Uh, Ill nine or ten watts and then about 11 watts on 70 sems so slightly more power on 70 sems on these ones but uh, i'm going to go back up the cliff because it is definitely windy down here so uh, probably be a lot of wind noise in my video and in the radio uh, but yeah i'll give you a call on the, from the next location and we'll start on 70 sems because that seems to work a little bit better there back to you okay so i've relocated to a car park on the cliff top we're now about three miles roughly from uh, richard's location so i'm going to try them again on 70 sems G0 VCW, G0 VCW, M7 FRS, M7 FRS, how copy Richard? M7 FRS, Tom G0 VCW, Tom G0 VCW, yeah, got you okay there Ben, in fact I've got you better on the uh, handheld than I have on the 9918 for some reason. <laughs> G0 VCW, M7 FRS, yeah, I'll copy there Richard, well I haven't got out of the car yet, I'm now um, at the other end of Pakefield, near the uh, CFAS building, and uh, well, between the CFAS building and the Jolly Sailors pub, and uh, we're on high power on the uh, on, on 70 SEMs there, and uh, like I say, I haven't got out of the car yet, so this is from inside the car, so that's not too bad, ever. No, not at all, that's uh, not too bad at all, Ben, uh, for inside the car. Um, I've just stuck the air in outside to see if it makes any difference, but uh, to be honest, I was, uh, I was getting you equally as good um, just a lower signal um, when I move the uh, radio. It's just a lower signal than on the 991A, which is uh, obvious because it's got an external aerial. But um, uh, when you first come up, your uh, um, your audio was really, really clear and really, really loud. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what it's like when you get out of the car. It's got to improve, all the thought, over. Yeah, I'll copy there, uh, Richard. We'll, we'll try it on, uh, well, if you give us a signal report on this one, then we'll uh, QSY over to two metres and see what that's like on there, over. Okay, well, you're about left three on 70 stems at the moment, Ben. So, uh, if you want to QSY to, uh, to two metres, we'll give it a whirl there. Back to you. Yeah, QSY to uh, 145 475. G0 BCW M7 FRS on two metres. Can you get me on this one, Richard? Well, nowhere near as good as on, uh, on 70 cents, uh, Yeah, nowhere near as uh, lots, lots more white noise on, uh, on 2 than 70 over. Yeah, all received. You're about an S3 on 2 metres. I can just about make out the screen. 
Okay, I'll uh, head down to the next location about four miles away. I don't hold up much hope for two meters, but we might be all right on the 77s there, Richard, uh, back to you. So I'm at the last location, right at the harbour entrance here in Lowestoft, and uh, just over there is where Richard is. He's about five miles away, so uh, let's try him again on at 77s, because that seems to be the best one so far. G0 VCW, G0 VCW M7 FRS, how copy at four, uh, four miles, over. So I say five miles, he's about four miles away from me where I am now. Can you go get me? Because uh, I'm a couple of rackets. I don't think I'm hitting you on the one bit. Uh, as well, you come through the start on that. I'll take that to that door get okay. G0 VCW M7 FRS, you're very in and out then, Richard. I might have to open the squelch up because um, I was only getting like every other word. So uh, just stand by a second, I'm going to open the squelch up. G0 VCW M7 FRS, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a struggle at this location. So I'm now four miles away and uh, you're very in and out. So, um, but that's not bad going handheld to handheld there, Richard. And it does seem to get hot in the palm of my hand uh, when I'm transmitting for any more than a few seconds, ever. Yeah, okay, Ben. Um, I don't know how you're reading me now. I'm on the UV25 now, uh, and your reception on that is remarkably better than on the uh, the other one we're testing at the moment. So, uh, uh, the baby sister isn't got as good reception as this uh, UV25. So, I don't know whether you copy me now or what on the UV25. Ben, over. She's here at VCW M7 FRS. Yeah, absolutely fine on the UV25 there, uh, Richard. But obviously, it's got a uh, better antenna as well. So. Um, but that's not bad for a handheld to handheld uh, at uh, probably just over four miles um, from where I am to where you are. And uh, it's quite hazy as well. But uh, I really appreciate the test there, Richard. Should we try uh, two metres and see if that works? Yeah, OK, Ben. I'm back on the small one again. Can you read me on that at all? Yeah, still getting you on the, uh, I think it's the UV5R or the... K5, whatever it is, whatever this one is, we're testing. It's identical, isn't it? Yeah, I've actually just uh, I've come outside to help it, so uh, it's better outside than it is inside at this sort of difference, which uh, distance, which uh, obviously makes sense. Okay, mate, QSY two meters. Yep. Cheers, Richard. We'll QSY to two meters. So press the A B button on the top one now. It's two meters. You can't see it. That's the downside to these is the screens are awful in this light. Seven FRSG zero VCW. Yeah, G0VCW M7 FRS. Yeah, I got you on that one, Richard. Are you on the UV25 or the K5? I'm on the K5 at the moment, Ben, and uh, let's be honest, that's the best it's been on two metres, over. Yeah, obviously, well, I'm on the South Pier, so it is direct line of sight. I say it is uh, four and a bit miles from where I am to where you are, and uh, I can just see the peninsula of Kesson and uh, over my shoulder. It's a bit hazy, but um, yeah, that's absolutely fine at the moment, over. Yeah, quite impressed. Um, are you going down to the next point or are you calling it it? No, I think I'll call it there because I don't think uh, five miles is worth trying because I think we're, somewhere, we're literally struggling now. But uh, yeah, many thanks for the uh, the test uh, well, this morning and this afternoon there, Richard. Back to you. So there you go. That was Richard myself out testing the Biofen K5s. Thanks ever so much to Richard for your help. And I've left Richard with the Biofeng UV25 and the UV28, which I also reviewed recently. I'll leave links in the description down below to where you can see those videos if you're interested in those radios as well. Uh, this is essentially the same radio. It's smaller. I know it looks like one of the Quanchang models with that typical orange button on the top there, but uh, and obviously the, the way it's designed. Uh, but it's actually very similar to the 28 and the 25. Spec-wise, pretty much the same. Uh, the menu's identical. The um, firmware version is slightly different between the three of those, but again, they can probably be changed. And like I say, essentially, it's the same radio. It's got uh, 2 meters, 70 SEMs, VHF, UHF, 1.25 meters. It's a tri-band radio. Again, there's no point me going through the specs because they're all, uh, all pretty much the same, these radios. And uh, incidentally, this is uh, sold as a 10 watt radio so I'll do the checks now but um, actually this seemed to perform better than the UV25 and the UV28 across the two bands. The UV28 performed better on one band and not so well on the other and vice versa with the uh, uh, UV25 from Emmy. but this was pretty constant. I think on uh, 70 SEMS was putting out about 9 watts 
uh, 9.35 according to the power meter there. If we change over to 2 meters, it was putting out uh, about 11, maybe even 11 and a half watts. Anyway, thanks as always for watching and uh, stay tuned. Hit the like, subscribe, and uh, like I say, all the links are down below, and we'll see you on the next one. 73.